we're just still going through a series called Redefined. And if this is your first time, we've been talking of, about the Sermon on the Mount, the teachings of Jesus from Matthew 5 to Matthew 7. And if you've been attending with us, this is our week 14 now. And uh, two more Sundays. I think two more Sundays to go till we wrap this series. And we'll have a new series on November. And it's a series about Malachi. Not Malachi, Malachi. That's the last book of the Old Testament. It's a book study. But that will only be, if I'm not mistaken, four weeks. So this series is long and... The next series will just be four weeks, just one month equivalent, and then we'll go, grabe Christmas na. Then we'll go have a Christmas series on December. You know, um, from years now of serving God, I've noticed that there are prayer requests that I actually realize that there are prayer requests that God immediately answers. Then I realize there are also prayer requests that really takes a long time before God answers. You know what I'm talking about? I remember there's one person that I got to pray for after the service. And we were in faith. We prayed together. And he was actually believing God to pass a board exam. Okay? And some of you, you know, you came to me also. We prayed for that. And then, you know, Joe, what happened is when the moment they took the board exam, the Lord answered their prayers. And so the Lord was quick in answering their prayers. And then so they updated me. Once they saw the results... They passed, praise God. But there was also, I remember, that there are people that I prayed for, and we prayed together. We were in faith. Week, a week came, no answer. Still praying for that same prayer request. Two weeks, no answer. Three months, no answer. Two years, still no answer. And then three years, after like 10 years, then the Lord answers. Wow. How can you compare the kind of prayer request, someone who's believing for a board uh, exam to pass, I mean like a month after the Lord answers their prayer, and then here there's this person, years praying to God, years of praying to God, no answer, only to find out the Lord answered 10 years after. Wow. Someone who is believing God for healing, the week after the Lord answers, praise God. But then I saw prayer requests, just was wrapping, uh, just browsing through my, in, my files in my laptop, there was a testimony of maybe a woman who was pre- believing God for salvation for his family, his, her whole family to get saved, and she was believing God for 10 years. 10 years after, the family gets saved. It took like years of fasting. Hindi naman forever fasting, like from January to December 31, you were fasting, you didn't eat anymore. But years of prayer, 10 years. One week, the person gets an answer to the prayer request. Ten years, the Lord finally answers. My question to us is this. What do you do when your prayer requests don't get answered immediately? It's a good question. What do you do when your prayers don't get answered immediately? How many of you know, can relate to what I'm talking How many of you have prayer requests and the Lord hasn't answered yet? Okay, some, no prayer request. (laughs) I'm sure all of us can relate when there are times and seasons in our lives, we pray to God, ask for certain things, and it takes a while before God answers. But what do you do when you are in the season of waiting? When you're praying, like Job was exhorting us a while ago, we lifted up our hands, we're believing God for our prayer requests, but the Lord hasn't answered it yet. It can vary from one week or to one decade, 10 years. That's what we're going to talk about tonight, talking about kingdom living. What do you do when your prayers don't get answered immediately? Jesus gives us an answer in Matthew 7, verse 7. Jesus said, ask, and it will be given to you. Ask. Sometimes when we pray to God or when we have desires and you wonder why the Lord hasn't answered it yet, maybe you can start off with that. Ask, have you requested already? Have you come to the throne of God? Have you prayed to Him? But the second level is seek and you will find. Seek is actually more of asking is a simple prayer request. Maybe some of you believe in God for financial provision tonight. The next day someone calls you and gives you money. 
That's a simple request, but the Lord answered it the next day. But sometimes you've been, some of us, you're believing for a financial provision, but the Lord hasn't answered. The next day, no one calls you up. The next day, they didn't give you a salary increase. The week after, you're still believing God. What do you do? Maybe God is pushing it to the next level. Seek. It requires more effort on your part. Ask is a simple prayer request and then the Lord answers easily or immediately. Sometimes you're not here in this mode, you're here. It's seek. It requires more effort. It requires more patience. It requires more fasting. It requires more people to pray for you and pray with you. Seek and you will find. But then there's another level that the Lord is actually talking about and it's not just a simple request. It's not just a journey of searching or waiting or requiring, exerting more effort. But the third one is this, knock and it will be open to you. Knock. Of course, there's a door. You don't knock without, no, nakakatakot yun. If you're, there's no door, you're knocking. When you knock, there is a door. That means a door speaks of a barrier. There's a hindrance. There's something that's blocking or hindering you or preventing you from getting that promise or breakthrough. You'd have to knock. If seeking requires more effort, knocking will require your total strength and your patience and the fruit of the Spirit, kindness, joy, peace, and all those things. It will require you to cry more. Tears will fall from your eyes more. And you will just have to slam that door to believe that the hindrance will disappear and you receive that breakthrough. It will require more time. Seeking requires more time. Snocking will require more, 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 more patience, I guess. Ask, simple request, the next day the Lord gives. Or maybe 30 minutes after the service, the Lord gives. He can. Sometimes the Lord won't allow you to be in that situation. Sometimes the Lord will allow you to be in the seeking mode. And then, if not, requires more years, push you to the knocking mode. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Every time, I, whenever I prepare for a preaching, thank God, the Lord has been kind. It's tiring to preach every week. It's tiring to prepare every week. And I've really noticed that. I'm thinking about the situation of a simple request and then the Lord gives. So every time I prepare, Job, Job and I, we prepare for the preaching every week. I run out of ideas. I run out of creativity on how to present it to us every week. And so I ask God, Lord, I need your strength. There are a lot of meetings. There is counseling. There are small groups, mentoring meetings. And so I need your grace, Lord. Give me those creative ideas to be able to present it well. And then you know what? 30 minutes or one hour, thank you, Lord, the Lord gives. Simple ask, simple hearing of God, and then God hears, gives it to me instantly. Thank you, Lord. Ask. I remember I was talking to a creative writer who works in an ad agency. She also told me the story. There are times she runs out of ideas, creative writers. And so she's thinking of concepts, and then when she prays to God, when she starts praying a simple prayer, not even lifting up her hands, just a simple prayer in her mind, Lord, give me those creative ideas. And then the Lord gives, and then she's able to make a concept and present it to the team. Creative writer. Simple ask, but the answers come instantly, immediately. Then I realized there are seasons in my life and situations where God, I wish, how I wish, all of us were just here. It's to ask and then the Lord gives, like a genie. Lord, give me this, and then... Whoop. But sometimes the Lord, or most of the time, the Lord doesn't want you to be here forever. He wants you, sometimes He'll push you, for some reason, to be on the seeking stage. Seeking stage requires more patience. It will take more time. It will take more fasting. When I was 27 years old, I was still single. 
wanted to get married, 27 years old. My friends were getting married already, and here I am, left behind, just like a rapture. People went to heaven already, I'm still here on earth. 27 years old, there was already a desire. I was a youth pastor back then, 27. I believe, I believe the Lord put that desire in my heart to get married. 27, Kian. You're engaged already. How young are you? Huh? 23. Kian got engaged. Thank you, Lord. God is good. So I was 27 years old. I wanted to get, so I prayed. Let me tell you, I fasted. We have a five-day prayer and fasting every January. I participated and I wrote it down. The number one is to get married. Find, found a common friend, group of friends to pray for me also, to sympathize with me, I guess. <laughs> but I'm going to get married and finally find the one. 27 years old, bro. Fasting came, like, that was like, so if I was 27, siguro ano ko noon, at 9, 2000, ah, uh, man. 2008. Yeah, 2008. I wanted to get married already. And so how I wish the ideal scenario was just a simple ask. Where I pray 30 minutes after, there she goes. <laughs> right? Like, parang serendipity lang. No? When you, I press the button in the elevator and then she opens, voila, woman. <laughs> I hope that was the ideal. It's not easy, right? But the Lord had to put me on the seeking stage. Prayer was not just enough. Praying and fasting and rallying the whole church to lay their hands on me. <laughs> I hope that was enough. But the Lord had to allow me to go through what I call the seeking stage. Praying, I expected that, you know, there, every night I pray for you know, look at the stars. Because my kwarto ko condo unit, there's a window and you see the sky. And I pray, and Lord, maybe tomorrow the FedEx can come and knock on my door six in the morning. And then I open the big box; she's there. <laughs> but the Lord was speaking to me. Man, ligaw ka? Ah, ganun ba? Kailan pala man ligaw? <laughs> I thought it was just a simple prayer. The Lord delivers it to you, like Adam and Eve. Right? Adam was sleeping. Adam wakes up. Ring. Eve was there. I open it, door in the morning, no one. So the Lord was speaking, probably Patrick, you need to expose yourself in the singles world. Remember, I'm a youth pastor, right? I always hang out with the students. So I started hanging out. From 2008, the searching took a while. 2008, I exposed myself to other churches, hung out with other singles, tried to... Kaya yung mga single men, I want to encourage you. There's nothing wrong when you see a lady pass by the aisle sometimes and you know she's single. Because every time when I was single back then, I'll make a confession again. I see that person while worshiping and you see a pretty lady pass by, okay? There are times, pwede, pwede. Pwede, pwede. Potential to, potential. I love you, Lord. Sabay ganun eh, no? Yeah, yeah, I did that. Because I was already searching. Pwede. Nadidistract ako. Kala mo, nag-worship ka. No? Great is thy faith. And so I was that. I, I did that. I mean, I wasn't just praying. I was fasting and I asked my friends to pray for me and pray for you, trusted friends. And of course, the pastors, every time they see me, they also lay their hands on me. Every time we have a prayer meeting, they also pray for me. And so it took years. And to be honest, I also tried to get to know other girls, other women in church. Seeking. Well, the Lord had a purpose because I tried and uh, I did my best. But I think my best wasn't good enough. But then 2013 came. 2012. Malipa, Iba pala yun. 2012 came. My wife is here. She's gonna kill me. Four years, huh? 2012 came. During the relief operations, the church opened their doors, and then I saw that woman. And then she saw me all. 
And then the rest was history. And then the year after, we became boyfriend and girlfriend. And then two years after, 2014, we got married, seeking. I was believing for a breakthrough, love life breakthrough. But it took me four years to search, to pray, to exert more effort, to try out, to to expose myself. I wasn't just dilly-dallying like simply asking. I wasn't just in the worship night every month to believe God for a love life breakthrough. No, it's not like that. I had to be here to search. It will require more effort and patience. That's seeking. And sometimes the Lord will elevate your prayer life from simply asking to deliberately, patiently seeking. For those people who are believing for a job, and it's been months now, let me encourage you, you're still in the seeking stage, you go for it. You continue to search. You continue to apply. You continue to believe God. Pray, work, pray, work. And then, of course, the knocking. There's a hindrance. There's a hindrance. It wasn't just patiently waiting and searching. This one knocking stage is there's a door. You really have to slam it, slam it gradually until it breaks and there's a, you can see a hole and there's a breakthrough coming. My wife and I were talking to a couple a few days ago and they were like, we consider them as veteran couples. They're more seasoned and so we were just sharing to one another our stories and they were They were actually married for a long time, but now, but they were, we didn't know. It was just the time that they shared. They have three kids now. It was four years after, since they have a, uh, four years after before they got their first child. And then it was the first time we heard their story where there was actually a barrier. The wife was actually. It's a medical term. It's like P-poly-picos, polycystic, something in the ovaries, ovarian syndrome. Is that what? It? And so there was something there, and they wanted to have a baby already the year, within the first year, but for some reason there was a barrier. And so they rallied the church to pray for them. They fasted and prayed. They went to the doctor. And it wasn't just a regular uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, it was something worse. The doctor had to do a surgery. They were telling us the story. Oh, really? I didn't know. But they have three kids now. But four years in the making. Praying, fasting, check up, and what's worse is surgery. They went through surgery, the, the wife. But then four years after, they tried, and then she conceived. And then after that, it went well. Years after, there was a second baby. And then the third. Praise God. But there was a barrier. They had to knock. They didn't just pray simply. They didn't just fast. They, it is, this is what we call faith in action. Faith without action is dead. And so they went through all, they exhausted all the options. And they received that breakthrough. Asking, seeking, knocking. You know where you are. If you feel the Lord is pushing you there, let it be in the seeking mode. If you're not in the seeking mode, I'm sure some of us are in the knocking stage. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. That means you're pushing. Not a song, knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. That's not a good song. But literally, you're actually what I call, what will you do? Here's the answer now to my question. What do you do when your prayers don't get answered immediately? Persist. Persist. Other words, persevere. What do you do when your prayers don't get answered immediately? You knock heaven. You fast. You proclaim the promises of God. You exert every effort. You work on it until you receive it. 
That's what Jesus is saying. Because I know a lot of us are in the waiting stage. Persist. In Tagalog, maganda sabi in Tagalog. Let me. I hope you don't mind some of the foreigners. In Tagalog, kulitin mi si Lord. Meron ba kayong kailangang makulit? Yung makulit talaga, yung text ng text sa'yo, ayaw mo namang ka-text. Or like say, requesting something from you and I use, you already declined and then here, he or she was, is again, is she'll request something and then until you, you give in. <laughs> it's persist. What do you do when your prayers don't get answered immediately? Kingdom living requires us to persist. God is calling us to persist. To persevere and believe God as long as you're breathing. Look at the person beside you if that person is still breathing or looks alive. Or as long as that person is alive and as long as you are alive, we persist. How many of you here, you're still in faith that the Lord will give something to you? That the breakthrough is coming, right? And you haven't even felt it. You're doubting now. You're concerned. You're, oh man, you're, you're feeling hopeless. Let me tell you, this is a message for you. You persist no matter what. That's what happens. Think about fasting. The testimonies. Every time they post during the fasting, five-day prayer and fasting, and the three-day prayer and fasting, they post their answer prayer. You ask some of them, I'm sure majority of them, it took tears. It took years before that breakthrough comes or came. Persist. That's what you mean by ask. Ask, seek, Knock. God is calling us to have a persistent prayer life. And there's nothing wrong by being or being persistent. There's nothing wrong. Christians are called to persist. Why can we persist? That's a good question. What gives us the reason to be audacious and persistent? What gives you and me the right to persist and be audacious in asking something big from God. And the Lord gives you a reason in verse 9. He said, Or which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Maybe Jesus is making, a, uh, again, saying a humorous, a funny statement here. Something that's weird and outrageous, right? I mean, to all the dads here, when your son or your daughter asks you for food, you won't give him a stone or buhay na bato. It's weird, right? Logically, a good father, a good mother will give something to the child, whatever the child is asking, especially if it's within your capability to provide. And then verse 10, or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a serpent. It's weird. You won't do that. You won't give something harmful to your child, you will only give something that's good. And here it is, what Jesus is saying, if you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask Him? You know why we can't have the audacity to persist? You know, in Tagalog, why we can have the kampal muks? Okay? Ano bang English ng kapal? Thick face. <laughs> I don't know if that's right. You know why you can have the boldness, the confidence, the audacity to ask God and persist if He doesn't answer the next day, you still keep on asking God. If He doesn't answer one month or three months or three years, you keep on asking God as long as you're alive. You know what gives you that right? Because He's a father to us. And he sees you as his children. Have you ever persisted or asked something from a stranger? Let's say you see someone in market market. Kuya pengin palod. Sige na, ano ba? You're not going to do that. You don't even have a relationship with that stranger. Or the person you don't know. You're not going to ask. You're not, you won't have the confidence and the audacity to ask. And persist and not give up on your dreams and desires, right? What will give you the confidence to ask is because it's in the context of a father to a child relationship. 
that what gives you the audacity to ask and persist. In our Filipino culture, we're, we're shy. So if we request for one, requested once and we get declined, in our culture, we don't really push it. Right? It's okay, it's okay, I understand. Love you. It's okay, it's okay. You won't push it. It's in our culture, right? Next time na lang, sis, next time. Kakaya. That's in our culture. Filipinos are usually shy people. We're not gonna push it. If we receive a no at first, okay, never mind. Destiny, destiny. <laughs> but the Lord is re- redeeming our culture. If you are a Christian, there's no such thing as nakakaya in the eyes of God. Now, what stops us from asking God audaciously or something that will give us a... What stops us from being confident in asking God? Well, a lot of reasons. I don't have time to tackle it. Maybe condemnation. Sometimes we did something bad. We feel we don't deserve it. And so don't bother Him anyway. Don't bother God. Second is we think God is intimidated. Who am I? I'm just a new Christian. Oh man, I just attended victory. I just got disciple. I'm just a new member. Don't ask. Let's just wait for 20 years after. So many reasons. Shame, guilt, condemnation. Listen, the moment you become a child of God and the moment you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Lord gives you the audacity to ask. Our access to our Father becomes instant and unlimited the moment you receive Jesus in your life. I wonder if you're thankful for that. It's a father. I realized that when uh, Lucy, my daughter's growing up now fast, he start, she's starting to learn how to, uh, she's walking a little bit, four steps, and then boom, she falls. And then she um, starts requesting, which she hasn't, she hasn't, she's still learning how to speak at, this age, at her age, but she knows how to demand now. And so, and she's not shy at all. And she already, thank you, Lord, she recognizes us already. She knows who her mom and her dad is, so that's good. Whenever I see her in the morning and she wakes up and I wake up, she's in the playpen and I I say hi, hello. She'll ask me to carry her. And she'll demand, (laughs) and then she falls. And but she demands. And then while I'm carrying her, she taps me. Wow, thank you. Is that the thank you? She taps me like that and she'll demand where she wants to go and bring me here in the kitchen. Or oh, even though there's nothing, something to see in the kitchen. Or you want to go out. But she'll demand. And there's no, there's no shyness in her. She won't de- huh? Huh? No, she won't do that. <laughs> Shy a girl. You're not gonna. Why? Because she knows already there's a relationship. She starts to recognize it's a father to a child relationship. And sometimes her mom also is like that. And she wants to sleep. She'll ask her mom. She wants to play, she'll ask me. She wants to sleep and if it's a serious matter, she goes to her mom. If it's one moment, she goes to me. But she'll dem- she won't be shy. There's the audacity to... And if, if it's not, okay, then sometimes we have to discipline her there. But if it's not granted, she'll just shout, yeah, yeah, yeah. She'll demand and she'll make sure she's heard. <laughs> think about that picture. I think about us and God. It's sweet in the eyes of God when we persist. God is not turned off. She won't, God won't say, Shh. 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 <laughs> The Lord wouldn't do that. In fact, I like that. It flatters me and it doesn't turn me off when Lucy always demands. She wants a hug from me, I'll give her a hug. She wants a toy, okay, as long as I can afford. But I'm willing to, I like. It's good in my feelings knowing that my child is demanding. She wants something from me. It's touching, right parents? It's touching to your heart. Oh, 
Kakatanggal ng pagod. Our relationship with God is like that. When we become kingdom people, when we persist in the eyes of God, it touches Him as well. Places Him. You're not a turn off. You're not a nuisance, mampagulo. You're not like that. When, she see, when the Lord sees you begging, pleading, persisting, God is touched because it's a father to a child relationship. I'm going to end with this picture. I know some of you have seen it, and it's a picture of JFK and JFK Jr. Where you saw that picture already, where President John, Ken- John F. Kennedy is so busy in the Oval Office in his table working, and the sun actually sometimes bugs him, but it's always there, just full access. I'm sure the son will just play toys and it might sound like a distraction, but to JFK, it was something pleasing. It was something like, wow, you're always welcome. Always good to demand God is not offended. When we plead, we ask, seek and knock, God is not. It's like, like, like that. I want you to remember this picture because when you go to the throne of God, and I, you know what I'm talking about? You keep on praying to God, it's the same prayer request. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You can relate to that. It's the same prayer request. If, I, if I'm God and Kian comes to me same prayer, yang kana naman ang kulit mo I'm not, but in the eyes of God, you come to Him, it's the same prayer request of every night, every morning. It doesn't turn off God. It pleases Him. That's what you mean by asking, seeking, and knocking. So what do you do when your prayers don't get answered? Persist. Why can we Persist. Because he's our father. It's a father to a child relationship. Kingdom living requires us to be a persistent child of God. Makulit. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, makulit ka na kristyano, okay lang yun. Persistent child of God. God is never offended. He likes that when you're persistent in asking him for the good things. Let's all stand. I want the music team to come and now maybe you can ask me now it's good pastor I prayed for many many years for my father's healing it didn't happen why I thought if I persist the Lord will give something well you define good there God the good is defined by God not us and when you look at the definition of good it's useful and beneficial I can ask God for a 10 million pesos tonight but maybe in the eyes of God, it's not beneficial for me. So who defines good? It's God. So He gives good gifts. When the Lord tells He gives good gifts to His children, He gives beneficial and useful gifts to you. And that's why when you prayed for healing for your loved one, and unfortunately, the Lord took him or her away, it doesn't matter. God is still good because He did something better. Our expectation is for Him to be healed, but the Lord had something way, 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 way better. And we can just trust Him for that because He's a good Father. But on our end, He wants us to be persistent. Amen? Let's keep on pressing on. My encouragement for us, let's keep on pressing on. Believe that God is a good Father. Amen? Let's just worship Him.
say it again. I want to encourage all of us here. I know a lot of us are in the seeking and the knocking stage. There are things you wrote down and it's been years, maybe months, and the Lord hasn't answered it yet. Let me encourage you, press on. All of us are pressing on. We persist. Continue to believe and slam that barrier by the grace of God and we're going to see a break and we're going to celebrate together. We're going to believe God for that. This is what kingdom living is all about. I hope we're just here in the asking genie stage. But the Lord will put us here. Why? For our own maturity. Let me encourage all of us. We're walking a journey of faith. And part of it is we're going to persist and believe God that nothing is impossible and He will give us the desires of our hearts. And I'm believing for that 6 p.m. May the Lord impart that gift. Let's lift our hands. Lord, may you impart that gift of faith to us. Some of us are believing for babies to be conceived. In the name of Jesus, you're going to give them the grace, Lord, to believe that nothing is impossible. To some of us, for business and financial breakthrough, you would give that to us, Lord, even though it's taking a long time already, for household salvation, Lord, for reconciliation of relationships, for healing for ourselves and for our loved ones, for different breakthroughs we're believing you for. We're persistent. Whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever we lose in heaven will be loose on earth. We're believing you for that, God. And here we are. We are your children. We can ask you a million times. We can bother you anytime. And it pleases you even more. And so you'll reward your children. This coming week, we'll see you as a good dad. May we experience you, Lord, as a good father to us. Someone who will always take care of us, Lord. Bless our week this week. Bless your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.